We'll look at Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. I'm here to tell you that there's only one way to heaven, and that is through our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. The one that you can have peace with. You see, the only way of peace is through our Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross for you and for me. Christ died for our sins, according to the Scriptures, and he was buried. Praise God, the third day he rose again, according to the Scriptures. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. You see, there's only one way. And the Lord Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And mustn't think that we're God's children. We're not until we've been born again. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And this is absolutely essential. It's urgent that we become children of God through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. In other words... What we need to do is come in repentance toward God, that is, a change of mind. Simply agree with God that you are a sinner and then put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your soul will be saved. That is the only way that we can get to heaven is through our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ who was crucified upon the cross for you and for me. And why was he crucified? He was crucified for your sins and mine. He himself has no sin, and yet he was made sin for us, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So moving on now, let us quote that verse again. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Who wants to remain being an enemy of God? It's not a good decision, is it? Being an enemy of God, and that's what we are by our wicked works and in our minds we are the enemies of God that's a hard pill to swallow but it's the absolute gospel truth so we need to be made the friends of God the only way we can be made the friends of God is through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ it's through his precious blood that was shed for us on that cross by whom also that is by the Lord Jesus Christ we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand uh, and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also. Again, this is actually the Christians to believers, knowing that tribulation work of patience, and patience experience, and experience hope. And hope maketh not a shame, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit which is given unto us. See, the moment we put our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, we receive the Holy Spirit inside of our body. Now, the Holy Spirit gives us the power to live the Christian life. None of us can actually live the Christian life, believe it or not. We've got to have the power of God to do so. And that power is resident, is inside the believer's body the moment they put their faith in Christ. They receive the righteousness of God by faith, in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, the one who loved us unto death, even the death of the cross. Uh, for when we were yet without strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. Now, this is what we need to understand. We're ungodly in the sight of the Lord. So we need to be made godly. You and I are unlike God, in other words. Just putting it in a simple way, ungodly means unlike God. When God had uh, created Adam and Eve, he created them in his, uh, in his image and after his likeness. But unfortunately, Adam and Eve had sinned. In other words, they disobeyed the Lord, which is sin. In other words, it's when we do things wrong or things that are naughty, or put it for younger people, in the sight of God. It's disobeying God, you know, same as when you disobey your parents. And so we need to understand that for the wages of sin is death. That's why we have death upon the earth. That's why you've been to funerals, I'm sure you have. 
of loved ones and, uh, you know, maybe friends. And you've been to funerals. Well, that's why we have the death, because the wages of sin is death. But the good news is that the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And so this is what we need to understand. The only way to heaven is through the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why the Bible says, He that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son of God hath not life. The question is, do you have the Son of God? Have you put your faith in Him? The one whom to know is life eternal. You see, it's either heaven or hell the moment we die. I wonder what direction are you heading in? Are you heading downward to hell or are you headed upward to heaven at the moment you die? Now it all depends what you do with Jesus Christ as to where your destination will be. It's either heaven or hell, there's nothing in between. There's no such thing as purgatory. Uh, that's a thing that's been invented by man. It's an absolute load of rubbish. There's either heaven or hell the moment we die. Where are you headed? God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So he wants you to come and change your mind. Agree with him that you are a sinner. That's what repentance is. It's a change of mind. Simply agree with God that you are a sinner and then believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Very simple. That's why many people are missing out on God's salvation because they don't understand that it, it's only obtained by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Got to put our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ to be in heaven. There's no way that we can get to heaven apart from our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ who died on the cross for you and for me. Christ died for our sin sins according to the scriptures and he was buried and he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Getting back to this verse, for when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. The Lord Jesus Christ is the only one that has strength to save us, to save our precious soul, our soul that is so precious unto the Lord. Do you realize that your soul is more precious than this whole world? Just one soul. For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? So the only way that our soul can be uh, saved is through faith in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. When he died on the cross, shed his precious blood for our sins, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. So Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, Yet for a venture, that means perhaps for a good man, some would even dare to die. But God commended, that means he exhibited or displayed his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, in that sinful condition, Christ died for us. That's an amazing little phrase here, isn't it? Christ died for us. And it's because of our sins that he died. You see, if we don't realize that we're sinners, we can't have God's salvation. We've got to realize first up that we are sinners in the sight of God. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. So the Lord Jesus Christ has paid the price concerning our sin debt that we owe God. We cannot pay for our own sins. We've got to understand that. The only price that can be paid for our sins is the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why the Lord Jesus Christ had to leave heaven's glory, to come down to this sin-cursed earth, to live the perfect life that you and I could never ever live, and then die the perfect sacrificial death upon the cross of Calvary for you and for me, and take our place as the divine substitute that took the sinner's place upon the cross. You know, I think uh, of a man called John the Baptist, he was preaching in the wilderness, and he said, um, 
Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. That's important. When we come here as gospel preachers, we're, pre we're pointing you to the Lord Jesus Christ. We're preaching about a person that is the person of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. The Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. I wonder, have your sins been taken care of? Have your sins been washed away in the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ? They can be. If you come in repentance toward God, as I've said, just change your mind, agree with God that you are a sinner, and put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, and your soul will be saved. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And that can be yours this afternoon. You can get right with God. You can have a home in heaven by putting your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, a question was asked a long time ago, what must I do to be saved? The answer was, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Very simple. That's why a lot of people are missing out on God's salvation. They think that we've got to do good works to get to heaven by impressing God somehow, by earning brownie points or something like that with God. It won't work that way. We've got to understand, for by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves it is the gift of God, that is salvation is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. See, if we could get to heaven by doing good works, we'd be boasting about it, wouldn't we? But that's not the case. The only thing we can boast in is if we're saved, is boasting in the cross of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, the one who died for us upon the cross, when he was crucified upon the cross for you and for me, he said, I am he that liveth and was dead or became dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore and have the keys of hell and of death. So we need to understand the only way to heaven is through our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. So while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And we're without strength to save ourselves, as I've said before, much more then, being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. You see, the wrath of God is hovering over our head if we are not saved, if we're not children of God, by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. If we die in that sinful condition without the forgiveness for our sins, we will be in hell. God does not want you to go down to hell. And that's why the Father sent the Son to be the saviour of the world. The question is, is he your saviour? Have you put your faith alone in him for your eternal salvation? So we can be saved from the wrath of God through the Lord Jesus Christ, through his precious shed blood and his sacrifice upon the cross for you and for me. For if when we were enemies, remember I said we are the enemies of God when we're born in this world, for if when we were enemies we were reconciled to God, in other words, made friends to God by the death of his Son, much more being reconciled we shall be saved by his life. And so the Lord Jesus Christ not only went into death, shed his precious blood, they buried him, but praise God the third day he rose again according to the scriptures. He's a living, loving saviour, my friend. He wants to save your soul from a long lost eternity. I wonder, are you prepared to come to Christ this afternoon? Prepared to understand that you are a sinner before God? As I've said before, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. For there is not a just man upon the earth that doeth good and sinneth not. So we need to understand first up that we're guilty, hell-deserving sinners. Then we need to understand that the Lord Jesus Christ died in our place. And if we come in repentance toward God, as I've said, acknowledge that you're a sinner before God, and then you put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, your soul will be saved. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the reconciliation. So to be reconciled to God means to be made friends with God. As I said, we are the enemies of God in our, in our minds by wicked works. God wants to make you his friend. 
But the only way you can do that is through the once-for-all sacrifice of Jesus Christ and our right response to that. You can just walk past or drive past and say, she'll be right, mate, it's all good, but it's not. We are heading down to hell by default. God does not want that for you, my friend. And that's why I come here as a gospel preacher, to give you the message of salvation, the message of hope, and the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. The Lord Jesus Christ loved us so much to give his life a ransom for all to be testified in due time. Wherefore, as by one man, that's Adam, sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. For until the law sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come. See, Adam was the figure of the Lord Jesus Christ who was going to come eventually and die on the cross for you and for me as the substitute that took the sinner's place upon the cross. But not as the offence, so also is the free gift. For if through the offence of one many be dead, in other words, the offence of Adam... Yeah, God bless you, brother. Thanks for the encouragement. Yes, for if through the offence of one many be dead, much more the grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, hath abounded unto many. So the Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross for you and for me because of our sin. As I said before, he himself has no sin, yet he was made sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So if you put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, your soul will be saved. And not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift. For the judgment was by one the condemnation, but the free gift is of many offences unto justification. So the Lord Jesus Christ suffered on the cross for our sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God. You and I are unjust. In other words, we, we're not right in the sight of God. We're sinners. And that's the problem. We need to be made saints. God wants to give you his righteousness by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. You need to put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ so you can receive the forgiveness for your sins and the righteousness of God through faith in our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. Yes, for if by one man's offence death reigned, uh, by one much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. It's always, it always comes back to the person of Jesus Christ. He's the only way to heaven. He said, I am the way, not a way, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father, in other words, you can't get to heaven, but by me. We mustn't think that God is our Father. He's not, until we've been born again. We need to be born again by faith, in the Lord Jesus Christ. Born again into God's family through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Again, for you are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. Yes, therefore, as by the offence of one judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so by the righteousness of one, that is the Lord Jesus Christ, the free gift came upon all men under justification of life. For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one, that is the Lord Jesus Christ, shall many be made righteous. What does it mean to be made righteous? It means to be made right in the sight of God. And therefore we can enter into heaven. Why? Because we have the righteousness of God given to us by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. So we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and we become a child of God. Again, for you are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. 
Moreover, the law entered that the offence might abound, but where sin abounded, grace did much more abound, that as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. So we see here again that the fact emphasized that the only way that we can receive eternal life is by Jesus Christ our Lord. He is the only way of salvation, the only way that we can have forgiveness for our sins and a home in heaven by putting our faith in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Moving on now, to, we want to read uh, Romans chapter 9. Romans chapter 9, I say the truth in Christ, I lie not. My conscience also bear me witness in the Holy Spirit that I have great heavy, heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. For I could wish that myself were a curse from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen according to the flesh. He's talking about the Jews, his fellow countrymen, the Jews, who are Israelites, uh, to whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the service of God and the promises. Uh, whose are the fathers and of whom, as concerning the flesh, Christ came, who is over all, God bless forever. Amen. See, the Lord Jesus Christ was born a Jew. Now, we mustn't think the Lord Jesus Christ began to exist when he was born of Mary. That's wrong. He's the eternal self-existent one, along with the Father and the Holy Spirit. They have always been out there. They've always existed. The triune God. We see the Godhead fully displayed in the person of Jesus Christ. Scripture says, For in him, that is, in the Lord Jesus Christ, dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. So we need to understand the Lord Jesus Christ is God. God manifest in the flesh. Many people don't understand this, and, and you know, it's hard to understand. I'm not saying that I fully understand it, uh, the triune God, but there it is. It's the absolute gospel truth. God is made up of three uh, persons, if you like. The Father sent the Son to be the Saviour of the world, and the Son sent the Holy Spirit to bring conviction of sin, righteousness, and judgment. You see, the Holy Spirit is seeking to convict you of sin so that you'll realize that you're a guilty, hell-deserving sinner and that you're heading in the wrong direction away from God. You're heading down to hell, my friend. God does not want that for you. He wants to stop your mad career down to hell. He wants you to be in heaven. Thanks for the encouragement. Appreciate it. Appreciate it, brother and sister. Good. God bless you all. Yeah. Yeah, the Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins. He took our place upon the cross, was crucified for you and for me, so that you and I don't have to go into the judgment of God. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. So this is really the condemnation that light is come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. They won't come to the light lest their deeds should be reproved or exposed. And so this is the point. We are in darkness without the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Lord Jesus Christ said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Here, yeah, so it says here, um, who are Israelites to whom uh, pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the service of God and the promises who are the fathers of, and of whom, as concerning the flesh, Christ came, who is over all God bless forever. Amen. Not as though the word of God hath taken none effect, 
For they are not all Israel, which are of Israel, neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children, but in Isaac shall thy seed be called. It just proves that you and I are not in God's family unless we put our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. This is critical. This is urgent. You need to put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ to have forgiveness for your sins and have a home in heaven. You won't be in heaven apart from the Lord Jesus Christ, apart from faith alone in him. Yes, neither because they are the seed of Abraham, in other words, just because they're born Jews, it, it's not meaning they're children of God, they're, they're not. They, every one of us have to be born again. Whether we're Jews or Gentiles, we must be born again. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. But in Isaac shall thy seed be called. That is, they which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God. But the children of the promise are counted for the seed. For this is the word of promise, at this time will I come, and Sarah shall have a son. And not only this, but when Rebekah also had conceived by one, even by our father Isaac, for the children being uh, not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God according to election might stand, not of works, but of him that calleth, it was said unto her, The elder shall serve the younger. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. And if you look back in the Old Testament, you'll find that these two men, Jacob and uh, Esau, they speak of two different nations because when the lady was um, expecting Jacob and Esau, she asked the Lord why she was having such a difficult time. The children were actually fighting inside her womb, making it very uncomfortable for her. And she inquired of the Lord why it should be. And he said, not two, not two children are in thy womb. He said, two nations are in thy womb. And what he was meaning by that from Jacob and Esau there would be two different nations be born, uh, eventually come to pass and they'd always be at war against each other they'd always be fighting and so this is what takes place even today we have people fighting together and these nations are fighting together but basically what it is is this some people think that that means that God chooses some for salvation and others he damns to hell that is a load of rubbish God will have all men to be saved. In other words, he wants you, each and every one of you, to be in heaven. He doesn't want any of us, any of us to go down to hell. He's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So it was two nations that the Lord was speaking about uh, here. Yes, um... Yes, what shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with God? God forbid. For he said to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. So then it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but God that showeth mercy. For the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, Even for this same purpose have I raised thee up, that I might show my power in thee and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. Therefore hath he mercy on whom he will have mercy, and whom he will he hardeneth. So what we have here is someone who has heard the gospel time and time again, heard this message a lot of times, and they harden their heart. And God comes and, and hardens their heart more, so that they can't actually come to repentance. That's what actually happens to, to some people. That actually happens to some folks. I hope that's not you, and I don't know who it is. But that's the point. When we hear the gospel, we need to respond to it, so our heart does not become hard. Like Pharaoh, he hardened his heart, and therefore he was unable, at that point, to be saved. That's a terrible situation to be in. 
Thou wilt say then unto me, Why doth he yet find fault? For who hath resist, resisted his will? Nay, but, O man, who art thou that repliest against God? Shall the thing formed say to him that formed it, Why hast thou made me thus? Hath not the power potter over the clay of the same lump to make one vessel unto honour and another unto dishonour? What if God, willing to show his wrath and to make his power known, endured which much, with much long suffering the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction, and that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy, which he had afore prepared unto glory, even us whom he hath called, not of the Jews only, but also of the Gentiles. So the Lord is calling out a people for his name at this particular point. We see it's the day of grace. God is long-suffering, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance and to acknowledgement of the truth. Again, what is repentance? It's a change of mind. Simply agree with God that you are a sinner and put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your soul will be saved. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you're interested in this, look me up, youtube.com forward slash peace by Jesus Christ. God bless you. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Have a great night.